I'm gonna just park you guys right there. The biggest fine that I have ever received in my entire life was an $8,000 drone fine. So in this episode, I'm gonna share with you the top five most expensive mistakes that can happen to a drone pilot. Number five on the list is flipping it in manual mode without having had any experience flying acro or practicing in the sim. Guys, manual mode is a different beast, right? If you have never, I mean even if you've had experience of flying GPS drones, nothing will prepare you for manual mode. You're gonna do crazy spins at the get-go and you're gonna crash the drone. Number four is setting your drone off from under a shelter. Now you may tell me, Raim, I got a skill, don't worry about it. I can just quickly launch and push my drone out of the shelter area. But guys, when you launch the drone, it will set that location as the launch point, right? The home point. So what that means is in case of any emergency, the drone is going to want to come back to that point and you may not regain control until it lands. So if you're under a tree, under a hard shelter, it's either going to land in the tree or crash on top of the roof. If it's on the roof, you may still be able to assess it, but if it's in a 20 meter tall tree, good luck with that. Number three is about leaving your expensive goggles in direct sunlight. Guys, we're not talking about overheating issues here. It's more about the goggles has like magnifying glasses, right? The diopters are like magnifiers, which in turn, not only sharpen the image, but in the reverse of it, it's gonna take that direct sunlight, shine it through, and it's gonna burn your screen, right? You're gonna see burn marks, and that means you'll need to change out the screen. So leave it lens side down when you're taking a break. Number two is going too far. Now that's kind of obvious, but here's, here's the thing, right? People have this presumption that, okay, my drone is a smart drone. It's gonna know when the battery is weak and it's gonna fly back. Guys, yes, it is a smart drone, right? It has certain features that will be like, I think like 30, 40% in, it will start coming back on its own, right? But here's the deal. It does not know headwind or tailwind. Guys, it may be so easy for you to go out and send it in range, maybe two, three kilometers, right? whatever the distance. True story, this happened to a, fri a friend of mine. He flew his drone out to sea. Uh, he was on a holiday of some sort, right? Uh, he was by the beach. He flew it out and when the battery was weak, he tried to come back. He, could, he, he saw his drone just hover in place, almost hovering in place, right? A slow crawl back towards mainland and that was because he was facing headwind do fly with care if you're doing those range tests a good 30% of your battery out is a safe safe number all right 30% out at least you have another 60 70 percent to come back the drone will want to land at that 15 10 percent mark all right without your control so the avatar is not a submarine go and do those range tests in stages. If you want to see a successful range test with the DJI FPV, check it out right here. And number one most expensive mistake is being naive about the drone loss. So when I started out um, flying drones, I had this belief that as long as I fly it safe, I'm not disturbing the skies right, of any uh, aircraft or whatsoever, it's okay. Guys, that's not the case, right? So Singapore introduced the law somewhere, not say introduced the law, I think the law has always been there, but the exposure to public was somewhere in 2019. But I had this mindset that I was just flying it safe. It didn't matter. But eventually, there was an incident that they wanted to look out for a drone pilot that flew into Changi Airport. Not me, of course, I was over overseas. But they found me because I was already a familiar face on the scene of FPV and so they came to my house not only the police but CAAS right, which is the governing body of the skies here in Singapore Plain. oh by the way before you judge me for still flying you know fly zone this is a fly zone it's just that 
planes will pass by this area and so the area I'm limited to flying only up to 150 meters but it's okay because I don't even fly that high it's not allowed here in Singapore Singapore law is 60 meters by the way so anyways coming back to the story is that it's a very long story point is um, they came to my house checked through all my old footage right we're talking about footage that even went back to 2017 2016 they found a lot of it um, 11 counts in total of having flown in either no fly zone above height or um, I think restricted areas so 11 counts nine taken into consideration charged for two then that was a four thousand dollar fine per charge totaling up to eight thousand did i get a lawyer yes i did get a lawyer it cost me another four thousand in total spent was twelve thousand dollars and i think that was about a year or two before the case was closed so i'm just sharing with you guys a snippet of it right um uh, trying to give you a more positive side of things i've learned from it life goes on i'm still flying drones it's fine right lesson learned most expensive lesson right for me school fees very expensive nowadays if you want to hear about the drone fine it's in an episode right up here it kind of has a bit sad solemn mood to it right i, I don't want to change your mood for this friday so let's keep the spirits up guys it's the tgif i'm gonna wrap it up right here now go out there go fly go meet up with your friends family and loved ones with that i'll see you in the skies peace i'm gonna send this drone